are you doing? They got children's church. What? 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 Uh, 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 oh, Come on, man, children's church. Uh, is starting. Uh, I'm in the wrong room. Oh no, I got to. All right, I'll be there. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's LifePoint Kids Online. We're so excited that you've joined us for LifePoint Kids today. If this is your first time with us, or if you've been with us before, we're glad you're here. Last week, we introduced our Thank You Sign Outreach Project. We're making up signs saying thank you to first responders, medical people, service people, people working at grocery stores, and we're putting them in our yards, telling them thank you for all the hard work they're doing while we're at home. Now, I want to give a shout out to Savannah because I saw Savannah's mom come up and get a poster board, a couple of poster board and a yard sign to make her sign up. So if any of y'all have made up a sign, let me know. I want to know so I can give you a shout out too. So have you ever felt really, really tired? I mean, really tired. You've had so much going on that you feel totally worn out. I know some people don't think so, but even as kids, you deal with a lot of things that can make you tired and weary. You know, things like sickness, hurt, stress. Well, I've got some great news for you. Psalms 23.3 says that God will renew my strength. When I'm feeling weak, God will, remove, will renew our strength. So when we feel weak, God makes us strong. In today's lesson, we'll learn that in our weakest moments, our good shepherd shows up and renews our strength. Well, we've got a lot of exciting things happening in the service today. So let's get started with Miss Olivia opening in prayer. And then Mark and the Addies are going to lead you in a couple of praise songs. Let's go to Jesus in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We just ask that you'll be with us as we're here worshiping you together, whether it's online, even though we're not in person. We just ask that you'll open our ears and our hearts to the things that you would have us to hear today, God. Please just um, be with us as we worship. Help us to enjoy our time and hear the words you would have for us. In your name, amen. Now join us with some music from Mark and the Addies. Lesson in our series, The Lord is Our Shepherd. 
This week we're looking at Psalm 23.3 to discover exactly what it means to have the Lord as our shepherd. So how are you doing on memorizing the 23rd Psalm? Remember our goal is to learn one verse from the 23rd Psalm, and by the time we finish this series, you'll have learned all six verses, the whole chapter. And if at the end of this series you can recite it, we will have a $5 Walmart gift card waiting for you here. But like you've heard before, the real prize is getting God's word in your heart. That's the most important thing. So just sit back and relax as you watch this week's lesson of The Lord is My Shepherd. Hey everyone, it's me again. And we're continuing our series, The Lord is My Shepherd. Now you remember the passage that we're learning from the Bible, right? Psalm 23, exactly. Well, let's review what we've learned so far from the first two verses. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. Well, it's time to learn from verse 3. Verse 3 says, He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to His name. Have you ever felt tired? I mean, you've gone through so much and you've experienced so many things that you just feel totally weak. Maybe you have a family member who's been sick for a long time. You've prayed for them over and over again, but they're still not better. It's almost like you're completely worn out and tired from praying so much. Or maybe you have somebody talking bad about you behind your back at school. You've tried to ignore it, but now you're just so tired of dealing with it. Or maybe one of your parents lost their job and now your family doesn't have enough money to pay the bills. Everyone in the family is doing their part to try to meet the needs during this time, but you're just so tired and weak from all of that stress. Remember who we said was our good shepherd? That's right, God. God takes care of us just like a shepherd takes care of his sheep. And Psalm 23.3 says that when we are weak, God renews our strength. Isn't that awesome? When we are weak, God makes us strong. God never leaves us. He never turns His back on us. His strength is perfect, and when we feel weak, that's when we can call on Him to renew our strength. And His strength is all that we need to get up and move down the path that He has planned for us. And that's exactly what you're going to learn about in your lesson today. You're going to learn from the story of the paralyzed man how God will renew your strength whenever you're weak. He's stronger than anything you'll ever face. So get ready to learn some incredible stuff today so that you can allow God to renew your strength so you can say, the Lord is my shepherd. See you later. All right, boys and girls, it's time for praise and worship. So I want you to get up, make a big old space in your living room, push all the chairs, everything, especially those, those ceramic pieces from Grandma. I, I need you to go ahead and shove them out of the way. It's time to get, get your praise and worship on. Okay, come on up here, Mark and the Addies. Come on up. All right, guys, get ready. Let's go.
heaven is your great and loving kindness. It's me, the SKI, to the double T L E S, Skittles in the his head, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about how God gives us strength when we are weak. So every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. When I am weak, God makes me strong. We ain't perfect. Sometimes life can get us down and make us weak, but God is able to give you new strength. He will help you get up and move on. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. When I am weak, God makes me strong. And that's what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out, baby, yeah. So as you guys just heard, today's what's up is when I am weak, God makes me strong. So every time you hear someone yell, what's up? You jump up and yell, when I am weak, God makes me strong. So let's practice our what's up just a couple of times. What's up? You guys can do better than that. Come on. What's up? Well done. And that's today's what's up. What's up? Good morning, boys and girls. Today's Bible story is found in Mark 2, 1 through 12. It's a story about a man who was born with a terrible handicap. He was paralyzed. That means he couldn't walk or even stand. Can you imagine being unable to walk or stand for your entire life? It was terrible. And his legs were so weak that he just couldn't hold up his own weight. One day, he heard that Jesus was teaching nearby. He had heard of Jesus' power to heal, and he wanted to go see Jesus. But there was only one problem. He was paralyzed. So he couldn't get to where Jesus was by himself. He, his legs were just too weak, so some of his friends came to help him out. His friends picked him up and carried him all the way to where Jesus was teaching that day. And it was at a house that was quite a distance away. When they got there, they noticed a big problem. It was so crowded that there was no way to get their friend into the doorway to even see Jesus. Now, they could have just given up right then and there and say, hey, you know, well, we tried. Sorry, man. But they didn't. They didn't just try to bring their friend to Jesus. They were committed here. When they saw they couldn't get him in the front door, they climbed up to the roof, cut a hole in this guy's house, and lowered him down into the middle of the room right where Jesus was. Do you think that was easy? <laughs> no way. It's hard enough just to carry someone, but then to lift them up onto the roof. Oh man, these were some incredible friends. Once they lowered their friend down to where Jesus was, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my son, your sins are forgiven. Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. Now at that moment, the man's legs filled with strength. Remember, they had... They hadn't carried his body his entire life. And he just stood up, picked up his mat, and he walked home. The people all celebrated the fact that the man could walk. People talked about it for a long time. We're still talking about it. This story describes very clearly God's ability to give strength to those who are weak. 
And in our lesson today, we're going to learn how God, our good shepherd, wants to give us strength when life has weakened us. If you're here today and you feel weak in your mind, your body, or your spirit, just listen carefully to today's lesson. You're going to learn how God can do the same thing for you that he did for this paralyzed man. He can give you new strength. Hey, what you doing? Gotcha. What's up? like a hairdresser except for sheep. <laughs> I am here to teach you today's power verse. Now the power verse today is, He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to His name. Psalm 23, 3. Well, hot dog, what an absolutely fabulous verse. But you know what? I could kind of use some help saying it. So, how about all the boys stand up and say the verse with me? Are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Psalm 23, 3. What a great job, boys. You know what? You can go ahead and sit down, and now I want all the girls to stand up. Let's say if you can say it even louder. Are you ready? Stand up, girls. One, two, three. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Psalm 23, 3. You guys did a great job. You can sit down. You know, one time I decided I was going to enter the World Sheep Shearing Contest. The record was 4,782 sheep, and I just knew I could beat it. And I was there just to shear and sheep and shear and sheep and shear and sheep and around sheep number 3,000. I started getting really tired, and I started moving slow, and I started thinking, I don't know if I can do this. But then I stopped, and I remembered, God will give me strength. And so I prayed, and I asked him to. And do you know what? I suddenly felt a surge of energy, and I was able to just keep going with those sheep until I beat that world record. Boys and girls, God will give you strength whenever you need it. All you have to do is ask. So let's take another look at this power verse and say it one more time together. Everybody stand up with me, and let's say it. One, two, three. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Psalm 23, 3. Great job, everybody. Go ahead and sit down. Sit down. You know, I have another sheep coming in in just a few minutes for one of my world-famous sheep hairdos. So I'm going to have to catch you next time. But don't forget, if you don't remember the power verse, that would be bad. <laughs> oh, I'll see you next time. What's up? So far in our series, The Lord is My Shepherd, we've learned that God wants to be our good shepherd. He wants to take care of us and he wants to provide for us. We've also discovered that he's able to lead us to places of peace when we're all stressed out. Today, we're going to be looking at our third verse in Psalm 23. Now, raise your hand if you're alive. I hope everyone's hands are in the air. Otherwise, I might need to call an ambulance to rescue you. Well, if you're alive, then you're definitely tired. I, I don't mean that you just played a long game of kickball, so now you want to sit down and take a breather kind of tired. I mean the kind of tired is when, when life gets really, really tough and it takes absolutely all the strength out of you. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about how life can be hard. Sometimes things can go wrong and just wear us down. You see, 
life can get me down and make me weak. Life is full of difficult things that we have to deal with. Maybe you have a family member who's been sick for a long time, and you've prayed and you've prayed for them over and over, but they're still sick. It's almost as if you're worn out and just tired of praying. Or maybe you have someone who's talking bad about you and been treating you wrong. You've tried to ignore it, but you're just tired of dealing with it. Or maybe one of your parents lost their job. Your family doesn't have money to cover all of the bills. Everyone's working hard to get through a rough, this rough time, but you just feel tired and weak from all the stress. Sometimes life can just take all the strength right out of you. But I've got good news. God can give me new strength. God can give you new strength. Our power verse, the third verse in Psalm 23 says that God, our good shepherd, renews my strength. What does that mean exactly? What does it mean for God to renew my strength? Well, it's like this car. It's a lot of fun to play with, but the batteries aren't mass, meant to last forever. After a while, the batteries get weak and eventually they die. What do you need to do in order to be able to play with the car again? Well, that's right. You need to plug it into a charger. And it takes a while, but if you wait long enough, the battery will be recharged and you can go back to playing with it. The same thing is true for us. When we're feeling weak, we must get in God's presence, plugging into Him. Then He fills us with His amazing supernatural strength. God gives us strength to go on. If we choose not to plug into the Good Shepherd, we will suffer the same fate as this rechargeable car. We will wear down and we will become useless. That's why it's so important to come to God so that He can renew our strength. When we do this, we are following the path that God wants us to follow. And what happens when we do that? Well, we find out that in the last part of our verse. He renews my strength he guides me along right paths, bringing honor to him. If I follow God's path, I will bring honor to him. You see, as God's sheep, we are to show the world what it looks like to follow his path. We can't just live our lives weak and never come to him for renewed strength. That would not be a good example for the world at all. God wants the world to know that they can come to him when they are weak. So we must follow God's path and follow what God wants for our lives, what he wants for our lives. When we do that, we will show the world how amazing God is and it brings honor to him. So how about you? Are you bringing honor to God? Are you following his path? If you are a sheep, you must come to him when you're weak. He promises to renew your strength. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you give everyone who heard this message today the new strength that they need to face the tough times at home, the tough times at school, and tough times in their lives, no matter what their situation is. I pray that you'll give them the strength they need to follow your path so that they'll always bring honor to you. We ask this in Jesus' name because we thank you and we praise you. Amen. The first step toward following the Good Shepherd is accepting Jesus in your heart. If you've never chosen to do this before, if you've never accepted him in your heart before and accepted him as your Savior, well, today might be a really, really good day to do it. All you have to do is pray and tell him that you accept him as your Savior, that you believe he died on the cross for your sins, and ask him to forgive you of all of those sins. Confess those sins to him. It's that simple. You can go to your mom and dad and they'll help you do it, or you can go to your grandparent, you can go to an older brother and sister, and they will be happy to talk you through the steps of salvation and accepting Jesus into your heart. I promise it will be the best decision you ever make. And while we're still on, I want to tell you, I want to give a shout out to David. Last week at the end of church, David gave his heart to Christ. He committed his life to Christ. So David, really cool, really proud of you, happy for you. What's up? All right, boys and girls, let's do a little review and see how much 
you can remember from today's lesson. Are you ready? All right. Number one. What's up today? All right. Very good. When I am weak, God makes me strong. Okay? Very good, very good. But I want you to practice that some more, okay? I, I want to see you guys jumping. All right. Number two, I got a little riddle for you out of nowhere. Okay? What would you call a girl who thinks she's raised by a sheep? Barbara. <laughs> okay. We better run on to the next question. All right. Number three. What was wrong with our man in the Bible story today? That's right. Yep. He was paralyzed. Exactly. Okay. Number four. Who brought the man to Jesus? That's right. His friends. Very good. Very good. You guys got this down pat. All right. Number five. How did the man's bed get inside the house? Oh, okay. All right. I got it all. Through a hole in the roof. Very good. All right. Uh, Mom and Dad, please don't feed any answers to the kids at this time. Number six. Did Jesus give the man new strength? Just like he gives us new strength. The answer is yes, of course, yes. Number seven, according to our lesson today, life can get me down and make me blank. Weak. That's right, sometimes it can get me weak. But number eight, according to our lesson today, what can give me new strength? Thank you, Pastor Don. God. Very good. He's feeding us questions and answers from the back there. Appreciate that. Number nine, according to our lesson today, when I follow God's path, I will bring what to him? Anybody? Anybody in the room? Honor. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. And number 10, the last one. All right. Where was our power verse found today? Psalm 23.3. Exactly. Very good. All right. Fantastic job. You're all listening great today. Um, Mom and Dad reinforced this through the kids through the week, and we appreciate you guys attending today's Brain Drain. All right. It's time for a game. We're going to have a little Debbie Cake Eating Contest with, uh, with Addie, Adeline, and Mark. And, um, and first, I want to make it a little more interesting. I'm going to put a little bit of whipped cream on the top of their cakes. Now what you guys are going to do is you're going to put your hands behind your back and when I say go, you're going to try to eat all of your cake and your, um, and your whipped cream. First one done wins, okay? So, but first we've got to pick people for you to draw for, okay? You're going to play, we're going to draw for people you're going to play for. Let's see, we're going to play, and you're going to play for... <laughs> Elias Jaggers. And Eddie, you're going to play for Jason Hatfield. Okay? And Mark, you're going to play for Gabe Carrera. Okay? You play for Gabe Carrera. Okay, so let me move this out of the way. But first, should I? Yes. Should I? Should yes. I? Yes. Should I? Yes. Really? Yes. Should I? Should I? Yes. Do not try this at home. Very dangerous. I've got a mother looking at me right now, very upset. You got something right here. Thank you. No, All right. right here. So, now remember, when I say go, okay? You guys start, and the first one, hands behind your back, the first one to eat all those are cake, and their whipped cream wins. All right? On your mark. Get set. Are you waiting? <laughs> Go!
were playing for? Jason Hatfield, you are a winner. You're going to get a $5 warm and warmer gift card mailed to you this week. Congratulations, Jason. Congratulations, Addy. Good job. All right, now remember, if you join us for Kids Church today, I want to let you know that you need to comment on Facebook, you need to text me, call the church, do any of those things, call the church office, leave a message, email us, but let us know you're here so we can choose you to play in a game possibly. All right, that's how we choose our online participants is by those who watch TV. All right, well, next Sunday, everyone that's watching will get to play in the game. Sometime between now and next Sunday, I need you to find a balloon, a balloon of any size for you to use in our game. This time, anyone of any age can play the game. That's right, even teens and adults can play too. So be ready with your balloons. We're so glad you joined us today. We're so glad that, uh, that, that you were able to watch and we miss you so much. We miss your bright, smiley faces. And, uh, uh, but we want you to hang in there. I'm sure that we're gonna be able to get together, back together again soon. Uh, we are praying for you every day. And now let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for teaching us that you want to be our shepherd. We thank you that you will lead us into green meadows and peaceful streams. You give us strength when we're weak all because you love us, and we thank you for that. We pray for every boy and girl watching here tonight today, and we ask that you let them know how much you love and care for them. We thank you for keeping them safe and loving us the way that you do. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.